Now on a labyrinth, the standard, uh, there's all kinds of labyrinth rituals. They all go through the basic three steps, and it's much the same as the three steps of prayer, really. Is you have the step of what they call the purgation, uh, followed by the illumination, followed by spiritual unity. You know, it sounds very highfalutin, but the idea of the purgation is getting rid of the inner demons, the concerns, the things that cause an anxiety, even addictions if you want to take it to the biggest level. And um, so whatever the inner demons is, you do the first walk in order to browse on that thing, that old skin that you're going to release. And then you'll come to this inner circle here as a place to be open to what it is you regard as your your Christ, your God, your angel, uh, your um, Harvey the Puka, <laughs> whatever it is, and spend that time being present with that acceptance of whatever your spiritual guide is. And then finally, for the unity, you walk with that guide. Now, the way to translate that in a very simple term is think of a, a simple question that can be answered with a yes or no. And it can be, shall I get that soap for my sister's birthday or not? And it could be something you've been worrying about, an anxiety. And so you can use a labyrinth for something as simple as that, pondering of why and visualize the different aspects of that and, and be open to it. And suddenly, without trying to analyze it, it, what you're trying to do is take away the analysis and allow the inner guidance to take over. And when you got that inner guidance, which you knew the answer all along, but you were demonizing it, that's what you sit with. And then perhaps in that sort of situation, you walk with your guide and you're actually going through a visualization of going through the process of, un uh, of the motions of answering that question. So it can be something very simple. And with kiddies, it can be a simple game. You know, if you've got a child who's been sent to the labyrinth, uh, they can spend the first bit pondering over, well, why is, the t why is teacher sent me on this? You know, what is it I've been doing that wasn't right? How can I sort it out? And then suddenly, oh, I get it. That's the center point. And then you kind of use that third bit of how are you going to overcome that? Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, Wonderful. But uh, as I say, this is not a regular type of labyrinth. A lot of people would use the... Um, the uh, Minoan one, where you go, you go through a singular path to the center. You would use the center in the same way, but you would go... You do the path in reverse. With this, I give two separate paths to do that. But walking this entire labyrinth is nearly a quarter of a mile. About 400 yards. And there's a lot more to this. Why is there different trees? What do the trees symbolize? There's a lot going on here. I've got the OM alphabet spelt out in here. Uh, I've got sentry tricks here. Um, I did build it to the width of a wheelchair could go here, but the, what happens when we had someone here with a wheelchair? We just suddenly had a bright idea, and uh, it was a person, I'm trying to think what it was they had. But we put them on a donkey. We took the donkey around here. <laughs> so the wheelchair, we've never had a wheelchair around here, but we had a wheelchair person on a donkey uh, that could go around. The, the quiche core and caves, and the quiche is a combination of two words. The key has really come from key, and key is just the same as like in the Orient, the, the flow of life or in the Middle East the calling of prayer to bring life and guidance. So East really from the Minoan origin of a woman and there wasn't a uh, it, so Keish is the woman carrying life. Volva <laughs> of the Morigu the, the, is said to be originally where the, the life of Erin first came, the, the first waters and so you've got the woman carrying life as the pregnant and then the Koran is really interesting because Koran is the, the word we use for Rowan, it comes from the Koran. So it's the woman of the Rowan uh, carrying life. And the Rowan 
uh, from ancient mythology, the second word uh, of the uh, Old Alphabet, and the symbolism of that is that uh, when we're born, though our uh, cord is cut, we're always umbilically connected to the womb, uh, to the spirit of the womb, and that uh, the Rowan is representative of the dragon's head, the dragon's fire that's always in our heart. And